This Lego block is the world's economy. 140 trillion US dollars as of 2022. For the past 34 years, the economy has grown by roughly 3.2% per year. That means that every 22 years, the economy will roughly double. Will this continue forever? Well, I'm going to show you why some economists believe that it physically can't. Let's continue current economic growth rates and see what happens. Imagine that the length of one Lego is one year. So in 2022, we've got one Lego block or one economy. After 22 years, in 2044, now we have two Lego. In 2057, now we have three Lego. In 2067, now we have four Lego. In 2089, now we have eight Lego. Then all the way here in 2170, now the economy is one meter tall or about 105 times bigger than it was in 2022. Then if we go all the way out here to the year 2797, about 12.4 meters from where we started just there, now this block of Lego towers would be all the way to the moon or about four times 10 to the power of 10 times bigger than the economy in 2022. And I'm not even going to read out what that would be in US dollars. Unfortunately, LEGO wouldn't let me use these rare 3D printed bricks, which were based on bricks made out of a meteorite and manufactured lunar soil by ESA. So I had to settle on these regular gray blocks. This video was inspired by some of the work by economist Robin Hansen. In his 2009 blog post, Limits the Growth, he discussed some of the reasons to believe that economic growth must slow down in the medium term future. Hansen said that if economic growth continued at current rates for 10,000 years, the total growth factor would be 10 to the 200. There are around 10 to the power of 70 atoms in our galaxy. Maybe you can see where this is going. Even if we had access to all of the matter in our galaxy, a growth factor of 10 to the power of 200 would mean that each atom would have to support an economy equivalent to 10 to the power of 140 people living at today's standard of living, or one person with a standard of living 10 to the power of 140 times higher, or some mix of these. Needless to say, this seems pretty implausible even with things like digital minds and full dive virtual reality thrown into the mix. In my video on utopias and dystopias, I discussed how each star could plausibly support 10 to the power of 25 human equivalent minds being run on computers through Dyson spheres, which would be 10 to the power of 36 minds if we built a Dyson sphere around every star in the Milky Way galaxy. This is still far fewer than the 10 to the 140 number Hansen mentioned. As a counterpoint to all this, consider that economic growth is not just the result of an increased exploitation of natural resources. According to analysis by the World Bank, only 2.6% of economic growth from 1970 to 2021 globally could be attributed to natural resource extraction. The rest is value generated in other ways. To borrow Zach Wienersmith's analogy from his 80,000 hours podcast interview, if you melted down your smartphone to its raw material components, it would be worth much less than what it would be worth as a functioning whole. But even with this in mind, any combination of people and standard of living you can think of to get the required economic growth factor, such as 10 to the 20 people, each with a standard of living 10 to the 190 times greater than today, still seems unlikely. Economic growth must eventually slow, stagnate, or reverse in the next few thousand years. Let's talk about energy, which might be a little bit less abstract to predict into the future than GDP. We know how much energy the sun puts out, we know our current global electricity generation, and we know how fast our electricity generation is growing. So just for fun, let's see how long it would take us to get to Dyson Sphere levels of electricity generation with current growth rates. Our global electricity generation was almost 30,000 terawatt hours in 2023, or an average of 3.4 terawatts, and it has been growing by an average of 2.8% per year since 1990. You'll notice two small dips here, which are the 2008 global financial crisis and the COVID pandemic in 2020. The total energy output of the sun is around 3.8 times 10 to the power of 26 watts. If our electricity generation continues to grow at 2.8% per year, we would reach the electricity generation of a perfectly efficient Dyson sphere in the year 3867 in 1843 years. It's hard to tell exactly how plausible that is, but let's suppose that we don't stop there. There are 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Our sun is a pretty average star, so I'll be a bit hand wavy and just say that our total electricity production, if we built a Dyson sphere around every star in the galaxy, would be 100 billion times that of a Dyson sphere around our sun. Continuing our 2.8% growth per year, we'd theoretically achieve that in the year 4784, or in 2760 years. But our galaxy is 106,000 light years across, and it's 26,670 light years to the center of our galaxy from here. So unless we manage to beat the speed of light, 
This is physically impossible. So at most, our electricity generation can't keep growing at the same rate for more than around 2000 years. When I started making this video, and before I started making that calculation, I knew the point that I was trying to make. And I had a strong feeling that current electricity growth would reach galactic Dyson sphere levels before 106,000 years from now, but I had no idea it would reach those levels that quickly. I just stared at my Excel sheet and said wow like five times. Not to diminish my existential crisis by too much, but one caveat here is this assumes negligible energy from other sources, including nuclear or some other new source of energy we haven't found or harnessed yet. Now as another caveat, energy productivity, which is GDP divided by energy production, has been improving year on year. In other words, we're getting better at extracting more value out of the same amount of energy. But to go back to Robin Hansen's Limits to Growth blog post again, all the energy productivity in the world probably still can't get us to, say, 10 to the 20 people, each with a standard of living 10 to the 190 times greater than today. Robin Hansen also talks about our current era being particularly unique. Today, almost anyone can talk to almost anyone if they wanted to using translation tools and global communication. This wasn't true in the past, and it may not be true in the future. In the past, we obviously had geographic and language barriers, but in the future, we might expect geographic barriers again if we expand to other stars. Even if we never leave our solar system, the two-way travel time for light to Mars and back is between 8 and 40 minutes, and to Jupiter and back, it's between 66 and 106 minutes. And if we develop digital minds, they may think millions of times faster than us, making communication between them and regular biological humans without modification either extremely tedious or impossible. Throughout this video, we've been assuming that economic growth rates would remain roughly the same as they have through recent years. But this hasn't always been the case throughout history. In fact, historically speaking, current growth rates are pretty unusual. In 2000, Robin Hansen wrote that humanity had gone through three distinct economic growth regimes, which could be summarized as hunting, farming, and industry. Global GDP rates of growth grew by a factor of several hundred from hunting to farming, and another several hundred from farming to industry. Hansen says this weakly suggests that within the next century, a new mode might appear, with a doubling time measured in days, not years. If we get another trend shift in economic growth, we might run into these physical limits even sooner. And Hansen's not alone in predicting that we might be approaching a trend shift. If we achieve artificial general intelligence, AI intelligent enough to improve itself better and more quickly than AI researchers can, we'd probably see an explosion in growth, assuming we don't just all die. Leopold Aschenbrenner has made waves recently with his Situational Awareness Report, which postulated that AI might be able to do the work of an AI researcher by 2027, based on existing trends. From there, AI development progress would almost certainly accelerate. Holden Karnofsky argues in his Cold Takes blog that the 21st century could be the most important century ever for humanity, mostly because of the potential of AI. And there are others. I've linked to these and the other sources I've mentioned in this video if you'd like to go deeper. By the way, shout out to Our World in Data, where I got a lot of the raw economic growth and energy data from that I used to make calculations for this video. They're a very useful source of data, graphs, and explainers for some very useful data sets. So what do you think about all this? What will economic growth trends look like over the next few hundred years? And is this really the most important century? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments and make sure to subscribe and stick around if you want more videos about space, science, and ethics. If you'd like to support me to make more videos rather than looking for gainful employment, you can do that by making a contribution to my Buy Me A Coffee page, which I've linked in the description. I started a second YouTube channel for behind the scenes content, which is mostly just tech tips and videos of Gemma at the moment. So make sure to check out Space Science Guy BTS if that interests you. Also links below. That's it. Bye.